Washington Journal continues. Senator John Barrasso at our table this morning, Republican of Wyoming, also chairman of the Republican Policy Committee. Let me begin with that video that was leaked of Governor Romney from the private fundraiser. Do you agree with what the governor said in that at that fundraiser? Yeah, I haven't seen the whole video. I, I want to get everybody back to work in America. We have you know, uh, 23 million people who are unemployed or underemployed. We've got to get America going again. And those people that are underemployed or unemployed who are on uh, unemployment insurance receiving money from the government, is Mitt Romney talking about those people? Well, as I said, I haven't seen the whole, the whole video yet, um, but my concern is for all the people of America. Uh, I want to have uh, equality of opportunity for all Americans. The president seems to be so focused on equal outcome rather than equal opportunity. We can show the video of uh, the video that was put out by Mother Jones uh, magazine uh, last night, and then, of course, uh, the governor responded to it um, last night in a conference call. Show that to you and our viewers. There are 47% of the people who vote for the president no matter what. All right, there are 47% who are with him, who are dependent upon government, who believe that, that they are victims, who believe that government has a responsibility to care for them, who believe that they are entitled to health care, to food, to housing, to you name it. But that's it's an entitlement, and the government should give it to them. And they will vote for this president no matter what. And, and I mean, the president starts off with 48, 49, 48. He starts off with a huge number. These are people who pay no income tax. 47% of Americans pay no income tax. So our message of low taxes doesn't connect. And he'll be out there talking about tax cuts for the rich. I mean, that's what they sell every, every four years. And, uh, and so my job is not to worry about those people. I'll never convince them that they should take personal responsibility and care for their lives. What I have to do is convince the 5 to 10% in the center that are independents, that are thoughtful, that look at voting one way or the other, dependent upon some cases emotion, whether they like the guy or not. Senator, your well, reaction? Well, the, the governor had a press conference last night, said that uh, I think some of his comments were inartful or in, in, inarticulate. I would agree uh, with that. Uh, you know, I think anyone who's president of the United States wants to make sure that the country does well and the president does well. I mean, we want success for America. And uh, the, the government has, over the years, expanded uh, what services are provided. Uh, you, you know, you look at the numbers of how much money has gone out over the years, even adjusting for inflation, uh, more and more and more has, going, has gone out. I think we have to have a discussion, a legitimate uh, discussion of, uh, and a thoughtful discussion of entitlements and what role government plays in the lives of the American people uh, and how we pay for that as we have a nation where today 10,000 Americans, baby boomers, uh, will hit 65 in terms of Social Security uh, and Medicare. So when you have 10,000 people a day joining those ranks of those uh, over 65, and it was yesterday, today, tomorrow, uh, we have to, in a thoughtful way, say, how do we deal with that? Uh, as our na my mom's turning 90 this year, uh, the year she was born. Uh, it was interesting, life expectancy in the United States in 1922 when she was born um, was 56. And now for a woman, it's 81. So over the last 90 years, life expectancy has risen 25 years. And, and how do we as a nation uh, best address that? It, I think it's a discussion that's worthy of having, uh, being involved in the presidential discussion and in the debates. And, and I hope we hear that October 3rd in the first debate. Here's the Washington Post this morning. Romney supporters see disarray. Earlier Monday, advisors, donors, and other top Romney supporters depicted a campaign in turmoil saying that a series of strategic errors have set back the effort. Are you concerned about Governor Romney's chances of winning in November? I, I, I admit Romney's going to win in November for all the right reasons. The, the economy is in disarray. Uh, the president's last four years have been in disarray. Uh, the things that he has done, that he has promoted to become, which is now part of the Obama uh, economy, uh, has not helped. We're at uh, 43 months of unemployment, over 8 percent, and uh, you take a look at the size of the of the debt, 16 trillion dollars. We need to get the pay the, the country uh, back on the right track. The uh, our previous guest, Congresswoman Donna Edwards, was talking about the so-called fiscal cliff that's coming in negotiations between uh, the House and the Senate and the White House over how to avoid that. Um, how to avoid the Bush tax cuts from expiring, what should be on the table for spending cuts. The Congresswoman said for House Democrats, 
uh, they uh, want to see the, the payroll tax cut holiday extended, but only for those that make less than 250000 Same with the Bush tax cuts. Extend them for only those that make less than 250000 Is that something that Republicans could compromise on? We, this has been the most do-nothing Congress, and specifically with the Senate, uh, in what a couple of, of decades. The, uh, you would like to see a number of things addressed. We haven't passed a budget this year, or last year, or the year before uh, in the Senate. Uh, you know, as chairman of the Policy Committee, I have a paper that's going to go out tomorrow. Uh, the Democrats steer America toward a fiscal cliff. Uh, we have voted on just 65 days this year in the United States Senate. So there are a number of things. You, you raised the one there about the, uh, the payroll tax cut. We haven't passed an appropriations bill this year. Why is that? Uh, you know, well, Harry Reid laid it out earlier this year in the National Journal. Uh, Reid's new electoral strategy, forget passing bills, he said. The Democrats just want to play the blame game in 2012. So that's what we're looking at. So I see this, I see, you know, we haven't figured out yet if they're going to pay doctors next year. Uh, the doctors are facing the so -called a 30% doc uh, cut. The president says he's extended the life of Medicare only if he lowers the, what they pay doctors who take care of Medicare patients 30% and then freezes it at that fee for the next 10 years. For somebody on Medicare, they're going to have a very difficult time finding a doctor to take care of them. Well, it, it would appear something needs to be done as we head toward this so-called fiscal cliff. You were a payroll tax uh, conferee last mm -hmm. year, uh, agreed to extend the payroll tax cut holiday for another year. Are you in favor of doing so again? You know, I, I voted against the... Uh, the, the conference committee report. Um, I don't think it's going to be extended this year. But we're also looking at in, in tax rates going up, um, the death tax coming back uh, in a much more onerous way, taxes going up on interest, on dividends. Um, I mean, there is a list very long, and I have a five page report on all of the different things that haven't been dealt with. But, you know, Bob Woodward just came out with a book, The, the Price of Politics, talks about the failure of getting. Uh, a grand bargain, which uh, I was supportive of actually doing a grand bargain uh, last year. The, the president failed to lead uh, on that, as Bob Woodward you know, lays out in the, first, uh, in the beginning of the book. So I think we need presidential leadership, and we're not having it in the White House. We're not having it on a Capitol Hill, and we're, not, and we're clearly not seeing it overseas either. Political reporting on that payroll tax cut, $125 billion hit to the economy if it's not extended. Well, and, it's, and there's additional hits with the death tax issues, the additional hits with you raising, the, uh, raising taxes on the job creators across the country. That's why they call it the fiscal cliff and why we're talking about a double, uh, a, a, a double recession. So, uh, but yet I, I was uh, debating Howard Dean, the former chairman of the Democrat National uh, uh, Committee, uh, just a week or so ago, and he said he hopes we do go over the fiscal cliff. Patty Murray, the head of the Democratic Senatorial Committee, says she wants us to go over the fiscal cliff. I want to find solutions. Okay, well, we'll turn to our viewers here. Mike's a Republican in Cary, North Carolina. You're on the air with Senator John Barrasso. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, Senator. Hi, Mike. Um, I wanted to ask, we hear so much about um, you guys, us, the Republicans, being obstructionists. And to a degree, it's somewhat true, but we never hear the other side of that coin, and that is, how many bills since January 2011 has Mr. Boehner, Speaker Boehner, and the Republican-held House sent over to the Senate that Senator Reid has not even allowed to go to committee or brought up for debate? He's pretty much just killed them. I, I've heard numbers anywhere between 20 and 30, most of these bills being related somehow to taxes, the economy, jobs, so on and so forth. So you would probably know the answer to that. And, and you know, Mike, additionally, a lot of them having to do with energy, American energy, energy security, uh, and affordable energy. And you're right, Harry Reid continues to block each and every one of them. As this article from the National Journal earlier that said, he said, Senate floor action will be planned less to make law than to buttress Obama's charge that Republicans are obstructing uh, measures. This, this isn't a Republican talking. This is the National Journal reads electoral strategy. And that's why we've seen only 65 days that we've actually voted in the Senate this year. And there are uh, very many bills, dozens and dozens of bills, productive bills, to get Americans working again from the, the Keystone XL pipeline, which are American jobs, no taxpayer dollars, 
going into that, but yet tax revenue coming in uh, from all of this, and, and yet the president being held hostage by the environmental extremists has blocked it, and Harry Reid has, uh, has done the president's bidding on Capitol Hill to prevent those sorts of votes from, uh, from even being held in the Senate. Here's a tweet from reviewer Senator Barrasso. Will the Senate pass the continuing resolution from the House before you all go on vacation again? I believe that the Senate will pass the continuing resolution. Uh, at, at this point, it seems like that's going to be voted on uh, perhaps as early as tomorrow. Uh, and it sounds like Harry Reid, again, with his do-nothing approach, wants to get his 23 uh, Senates were, seats, senators out there campaigning uh, in their home states because there are, as you know, only uh, 10 Republican seats at risk, 23 uh, Democrat seats. And it seems that Harry Reid's goal is to uh, is to get those folks back out campaigning. So I would expect that Congress is ready tomorrow or the next day to be finished with, uh, with for the year. For those that don't know, what's in the continuing resolution? Well, it allows the government to continue functioning for the next six months instead of the expiring date of the end of September. Uh, it, uh, it spends uh, about a trillion uh, at an annual rate of, of uh, 1.47, 047 uh, trillion dollars, but it's a six month deal. And it's, it's to keep, it's to fund the government continuing things going because under Harry Reid's leadership, there's not been an appropriation bill this year. There hasn't been a budget um, this year. So it keeps and the government functioning till uh, April 1st. And that's the level of spending uh, as last year, same yes, level. same level. Henry, Democratic caller, Detroit, Michigan. You're up next. Hi. Uh, good morning, C-SPAN. I would like to ask the senator. He commented earlier about the uh, comment that uh, Romney made last, uh, last night. Is he aware that his mother that he mentioned earlier that was 90 years old was in that class, that 47 percent that he was talking about? Well, I, I think there are, and, and David Brooks writes about it today in the, in the New York Times, and I see, Greta, you have that copy of that listed yeah. here and, and highlighted. Uh, there are Americans from all walks of life who have been uh, benefiting from what uh, you know what government has done and the question is at what point do we have the discussion which I think we ought to have now a thoughtful discussion of what role government plays in the lives of the American people you know people at home in Wyoming they want government uh, they want smaller government not larger lower taxes not higher and what's the responsible role uh, of government I think people want accountability they want results they want solutions and programs that have been very successful uh, over time, you just have to say, can we continue those in the way that they are? How do we strengthen those? How do we improve them so that those things are there uh, for people who need them? Uh, and on the other hand, how do you give more opportunity uh, for people so in this land with the American dream that people can continue to pursue their, their dreams? And, and when I talk to the small business owners all around uh, Wyoming, whether that be a uh, at, at a bakery or a, a florist or a, a dry cleaner or a, you know, a rancher or a farmer, uh, people who did build their businesses uh, and who've worked very hard, uh, and those are the people that hire more people, how do we get them to continue to feel the confidence that they will go out and hire more people and get people back to work and get the economy moving again? Oversight of GOP on Twitter has this follow-up question for you on our discussion about uh, tax cuts being raised. Senator Barrasso, so you support tax cuts for the rich in 2013, that is extending the Bush tax cuts, but not for the working class, the payroll tax cut. Well, I support extending the tax cuts uh, so that uh, we don't raise taxes on people that put people back to work. The, uh, and it's for, it's for all, of the, all of the different uh, income ranges. I think as the president said two years ago, said you don't want to raise taxes on the job creators at economic times like these. The to that was two years ago. The economy, I would say, is not any better now than it was then. If the president wanted to extend them two years ago, he should want to extend them uh, now as well, with unemployment still over 8% for now 43 straight months. Couldn't you make the same argument, though, for the payroll tax cut holiday? Yeah, you, you could make the arguments across uh, very... Uh, I'm always for lower taxes. I mean, I'm, I'm somebody that believes that we... Sh uh, tax less, broaden the base, have more people working. The way you raise tax revenue overall for the, for the government uh, is 
you have more people working, more people paying taxes. I think we have lots of opportunities from an, from an energy standpoint. I mean, Wyoming is an energy state. Uh, and when you're exploring for energy on government land, on federal land, uh, there's more federal taxes that get paid into Washington. So I think those are the things that we could do to actually raise overall tax revenue, bring in more, more money that they can then help with Social Security, with Medicare, and with other needs. Angela, an independent Arlington, Virginia. Good morning. Hi, good morning. And I, I really do pray that you would give me time to make my four comments and ask one question. I used to be a Republican. I am a Ron Paul supporter. And I honestly think that, you know, he is the only, the only gentleman remaining in Congress. And I'll tell you what, you know, number one, now we have a nominee in the Republican Party, you know, called Mitt Romney. This, this gentleman made so much money, you know, sending our jobs overseas and, you know, to China. And now he wants us to, to start, start a, a trade war with China. Number two, he, you know, he now wants us to go to war with Iran. He's okay with us going to war with Iran. This is a gentleman who has five men, uh, five sons, and not, not one of them, you know, um, is in the military. And he wants us to go to war with Iran. You know, we don't have any money to pay for those wars, okay? And then, you know, Ryan... Ryan voted for two wars, he voted for Medicare Part B, he voted for the stimulus, he voted for tax cuts, and now he's complaining that we're in debt? How does he think we got there? Okay, Angela, a lot there for the senator to respond to. Yeah, and, and what I kept hearing her was talking about Iran uh, and the concerns I have with Iran uh, uh, getting nuclear weapons and the issues right now with, with Israel uh, and, and with I Iran. The, uh, you know, I think that the, the president has... Uh, uh, has sent mixed signals. He says to Israel, we have your back. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that means anymore, and I don't think the people of Israel are sure what, what it means. Iran continues to move forward. Uh, I believe developing nuclear weapons. They say they're using their efforts for uh, energy and not weapons. I don't believe them uh, on that. And, uh, and I think we do need a red line and a deadline that says to the people of Iran, uh, and the leaders in Iran, that's enough. I mean, it, when folks were protesting in the streets in Iran. The president stood by silently when, uh, when I think he should have been supporting the protesters. Now many of them have been massacred. I mean, the president's foreign policy uh, is very mixed. You know, when, when you see things happening in, uh, in, in Libya and, uh, you know, you, you, your heart has to go out to the families of those uh, four that were killed recently, you know, uh, Ambassador uh, uh, Stevens. Chris Stevens, uh, you know, remarkable, all four, though, the, the uh, public servants committed to America, uh, and yet, uh, you know, what, what, what has happened? What are we hearing about it? They say, well, uh, they say it's because of a, a video. Uh, I don't believe that. I mean, we can go on and on talking about that, if that's because it seems that she was talking about wars in, in Iran, so I just want to be responsive to, to Angela's question. Uh, it is a very troubling time around the world, and the president, when he ran for office, said he was going to be a, a, a different type of a leader, and the U.S. would be seen differently uh, in the Muslim world. And, and, and it's not been better now than, it, than what the president has promised the American people and the rest of the world. It's actually worse under Barack Obama's leadership. On foreign relations, you sit on the committee in the Senate. Here's the headline in the Washington Times, stirrings on Hill for probe of strikes in Libya and Egypt. Will there be an investigation by the Foreign Relations Committee, um, by others up there looking at what happened in Libya and Egypt? Um, uh, there will be. We're actually scheduled to meet with uh, Secretary of, of State uh, Hillary Clinton this week. Uh, but as you know, it sounds like we're going to be out for the next uh, month or so till the election. Uh, we are absolutely going to need to get to the bottom of this. And when they say, well, it was because of a video and this was a demonstration that turned, that turned bad, you know, people don't show up with uh, bazooka, rock, grenade launchers at, at a demonstration. I mean, this was a, this, this attack on the, on the embassy and the death of these uh, four American heroes, to, to me, this was, this was uh, premeditated, planned, orchestrated, uh, and not something that just turned bad. In the case of Egypt, should that billion dollars of debt relief uh, happen? Should, it, should we forgive a billion dollars in debt? Yeah, I have a lot of problems with that. I want to get to the bottom of some of the things that has happened here. But you get into the question of where foreign aid is used and in what ways is it used. And uh, I think the American role under President Obama, uh, we are now, at, in terms of being a friend to our, or an ally to others, uh, I'm not sure that we are as trusted as we had been to our allies. We're clearly not feared by our enemies. 
We'll move on to Chris, a Republican in Baltimore. Thanks for waiting, Chris. Hey, good morning to both of you. Hi, Hi. Chris. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking uh, not to go back to the 47 percent and the Romney thing. I, uh, personally, I think it's um, I guess it could be important in the news cycle, but I feel like your last five minutes of topics are all much more serious and important. But I kind of liken it to the crazy TV commercial and the little baby is the, is the only person in, in the U.S. that doesn't want free stuff. I think most people, you know, like free stuff. And, and I think in some ways Romney was referring to that. But doesn't it? Doesn't it make sense to go back and look at Clinton and welfare reform and to sort of say, you know, if there are better options than sort of sitting around and, and maybe I'm, you know, having something that's provided to you, but if there are better options, I do think as a, as a people that's in our DNA to be industrious. Now, I think, you know, you need a strong economy to have that happen. But, um, but wouldn't it make sense to kind of think about this in the context of welfare reform, which I think most people would agree on both parties sort of was a positive and, you know, it was oriented to, you know, I guess feeding the economy and building the economy and, and sort of getting out of uh, what welfare was, uh, I guess, back with Clinton. Does that make sense to you guys? Well, it does, it does to me, Chris. And, you know, I, I hold up as an example what President Clinton did with, uh, with welfare reform. You know, there has been an effort by the, by the president, by this president now, to, to lessen, weak, to weaken some of those work requirements that have been part of welfare so that uh, states have... Uh, sought uh, waivers so they don't have to, uh, so that people can continue to get welfare benefits without doing the kind of work they've done in the past. So they now want to redefine work under President Obama. I think one of the things that could include is work listed as, well, getting a massage. Another one was uh, like writing in a journal, things that we don't necessarily think of as, as work. Uh, and so th I think there's been some changes under this president that, uh, and I think it's weakening the things that President Clinton put on. America has a reputation of being a group of hardworking individuals. We are a strong and a resilient nation. Uh, and I think you just want to make sure that there are opportunities so that those who want to go to work uh, have those opportunities. Uh, and there is so much uncertainty under this president who gives himself a grade of incomplete uh, on the economy and says he needs more time. That's what he's asked for, more time to complete the job. One out of three Americans say the country's heading in the right direction. Two out of three say the country's heading in the wrong direction. So we actually need to change course, and that's the way to get America back to work. Kathleen, Democratic caller, Pompano Beach, Florida. Good morning. morning um, I, good morning, yes, I have a question to ask the um, representative. Uh, can you explain or answer how did the uh, private sector benefit the African American community in this country, and also why was uh, affirmative action needed? And can you explain discrimination? Thank you. Well, that's a that's a long question. With a, with a, you can spend the rest of the, the morning uh, on that. Uh, the, uh, I want equal opportunity for everyone. I want everyone to have a chance, every child to be able to get an education, and that's how our country has continued to succeed and to grow. Uh, and I think we've got to continue to do that. Dayton, Ohio. Tom, independent caller. Uh, good morning to both of you. Morning. Uh, I just wanted to make maybe a couple comments, maybe you can um, answer them. But, you know, I've heard all this stuff. Uh, Senator Brown, I think he pushed in a bill to Congress to, and uh, Mr. Boehner didn't bring it up, and that was pretty much with the trade with China. And uh, I see Japan pulled, pulling the closing their plants and pulling the stuff out of China right now. And I'm not trying to bash China, but I guess I am. But uh, the Solyndra, people complain about it all the time. And come find out, we spend $90 billion on energy. China subsidizes theirs by $600 billion. Uh, I got a guy, Tim Cook, as a plant over there with 700,000 people working at it. You need to tax him 90%, my man. Tax him 90%. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, not, you said, I'm not sure who you wanted to tax 90%, Tom. I, I kind of missed that last part. I think but, he was talking about his neighbor. Okay. Uh, you, you know, we talked about jobs heading to, going to China, energy in China. Uh, you know, China right now is importing coal from. Wyoming. We're sending energy uh, to China. They are continuing to produce significant amounts of energy because you raised the issue of Solyndra uh, and the $500 million of taxpayer dollars that were 
wasted uh, on that program by the president related to his big donors. So, you know, I think there's a lot of waste through the Department of Energy, and some of its programs have been very unsuccessful. A number of the president's uh, green agenda projects have, have failed to the point where even the inspector general has said one of their green agenda training programs ought to be discontinued because the people couldn't get jobs. So it's a, it continues to be a problem, and I think that the government, that the president is completely wrong uh, with his approach to energy, and that's why I support Mitt Romney's uh, energy proposal where we can be uh, energy self-sufficient by 2020, uh, and we ought to be producing more uh, American energy. It's part of our national security, and we ought to be doing it offshore, uh, on federal land, and in Alaska. Westcliff, Colorado. Evelyn, Republican caller. Yes, thank you, Senator, for being with us today. Um, you say women live longer, but that seems to be kind of a problem. Uh, but they actually live longer because fewer women die in childbirth. Those women at risk can use birth control, and we can get cancer screenings early. And yet, you want to do it, want to do away with Planned Parenthood. And I think this is all about the evangelical faction of the party now. Uh, I have a daughter and I have granddaughters, and I fought when I was younger for, for all kinds of benefits for women, and now I see us going backwards. I'm a Republican woman, but I will not be voting Republican this year because I will not see all the hard work that we did to, to make advancements for women's health. I will not stand to see it thrown away. Senator? Well, you know, you talk about uh, people living longer. I, you know, I'm, I'm a doctor. I practiced medicine in Wyoming for 25 years. Was the medical director of something called the Wyoming Health Fairs to give people low-cost health screenings, uh, looking for early uh, issues of, of cancer. So uh, I think that early detection of problems, whether it be cancer, whether it be diabetes, whether it be high blood pressure, all of those things are, are part of trying to help us live longer. Efforts to eliminate smoking uh, has absolutely helped as well. Uh, and we are living a healthier, uh, uh, longer life, and we could actually do better if we could do some things with, with obesity uh, in this country. So we are living longer, and it's just the question is the discussion of how do we uh, continue to fulfill the promises to our seniors on Medicare uh, and on Social Security with people living longer uh, at a time when we have so much unemployment uh, and we need to make sure that we strengthen these programs uh, for years ahead. And when uh, the president takes over $700 billion away from Medicare, not to strengthen Medicare, but to start a whole new government program for somebody else, that makes it a lot harder, I believe, for our seniors on Medicare. And I've taken care of many, many of them, uh, that it, it makes it harder for them uh, to get a doctor and get the health care they need. Senator, the Washington Post reported yesterday that Romney's Governor Romney's plan would put seniors' care at risk. It says this, that it has been a central campaign premise from, from Mitt Romney, promise, excuse me, his Medicare overhaul plan would not touch benefits for anyone older than 55. That may not, however, be the case with the Republican presidential nominee's other health care proposals. A growing body of research suggests that his plans to repeal the Affordable Care Act and cut Medicaid funding would have a direct impact on the health care that seniors receive. Repealing the health law would mean higher Medicare premiums, the Kaiser Family Foundation found, Wellness visits and prescription drugs would also cost more, although under the current law, reductions in doctor payments would create an access issue. But still, these reports finding that his plan would have, would have a negative impact on seniors' care. Well, you just talked about very significant issues of access to care, because the president continues to use the word coverage and care interchangeably. And for two years, I've been saying, Mr. President, there's a difference between coverage and care. Giving somebody a Medicare card doesn't necessarily mean they can get someone to care for them. You know, with the health care law has money for IRS agents to investigate you, but really very little for the doctors or nurses or others to help take care of you. I mean, those are the, the issues that are out there. The, uh, the proposal that I've supported and voted for uh, is one that doesn't touch anything under the age for people uh, who are over the age of 55, and it deals with a different approach for people who are under the age of, of 55. But, you know, uh, Pete Domenici, Republican Senator, Alice L Rivlin from, from uh, uh, the Clinton administration, I've worked with both of them to try to find ways to best successfully deal with this so that we can strengthen Medicare uh, for, the, for the future. And I believe that's what Mitt Romney wants to do, to uh, keep our obligations and to the security that is needed by our seniors, but to make sure we need to have something there uh, for this next generation. 
Rhonda, a Democratic caller in Atlanta, Georgia. You're up next for Senator John Barrasso. Go ahead. Oh, Rhonda, uh, this will go to Don in Independent Greenville, Ohio. You're next. Go ahead. Uh, yes, you've been talking about payroll tax reform, and I think that should end because basically it is stealing from the people no matter how you look at it. it and I know uh, as a Republican you'd like to destroy Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid, but uh, anyways, this, these people that have uh, been not paying in for uh, two, two years now almost, uh, they are ready to retire, and they, you are actually stealing from them because they're not paying in the amount. Another thing I'd like to talk about is uh, the 23 weeks that you only work out of the year up there. And uh, Donna Edwards was saying that you got so much to do. I think maybe you ought to start working 52 weeks out of the year at the amount of time that's spent uh, playing golf or whatever. Okay. Senator? Well, I think we ought to be here, and I think we ought to go home on weekends and listen to folks at home. This is what I do. I was home in Wyoming um, actually yesterday and uh, the weekend before that, and I'll be home again this weekend in Wyoming and then come back here and, and bring back the best ideas from my home state uh, to Washington. And I think people ought to do that. But it's the, you know, the, the leadership, the Harry Reid, the leader of the Democrats, he wants to uh, end this thing pretty soon, and that's been his uh, effort this year. House Republicans are also, though, recessing, and they control the House. They, and as one of your callers earlier said, is the House has passed all of these pieces of legislation to get America back to work, have sent them to the Senate, which is where they seem to just die, just sitting there. So if the House continues to pass bills that are, I know, good for the economy, good for energy affordability, uh, and good for the American people, and Harry just lets them sit there and die, they could stay here all the way to doomsday, continuing to pass bills that aren't going to ever see the light of day because of the obstructionist of Harry Reid, the leader of the Democrats in the Senate. An energy question here for you on Twitter. Joseph Ramirez, Senator Barrasso, America exports more oil than it imports today. Why are we not energy independent? Well, I think we are, our goal ought to be energy independence uh, because it's part of our energy security, it's part of our national security. And with this boom of natural gas that we have now, you know, 10 years ago, we were talking and they were building ports in uh, Texas to import liquefied natural gas. Uh, now they're retrofitting them to export liquefied natural gas. We ought to, it will help our balance of trade. Uh, we ought to be exploring for more energy, export that. You know, you don't need the president going to Brazil, which he did, uh, and go to see Dilma Rousseff, the president of Brazil, and say, we want to be your number one customer. We want to sell energy overseas. We want to be, we want to be the supplier uh, of energy, and we need it all. We need to be more efficient in how we use our energy. We need the renewable energy, uh, uh, and we need to make sure that the other sources of energy are, are part of that as well, oil, coal, uh, natural gas, uranium for nuclear power, because in spite of the president's uh, green agenda, even his own Department of Energy will say that if he gets everything he wants, even 25 years from now, at the best, 15% of the energy is going to be renewable or green energy. 85% of it is still going to be oil, gas, coal, and uranium. Robert, Republican Line, Brooklyn, New York. Good morning, Senator. Uh, I, got, I got two questions for you. Number one, uh, why is not the, the governor of each state uh, prosecute those who are price gorging and, and, and gases? Because each state have a responsibility to the, to the consumer to make sure people don't overprice us for the gas. Uh, number two, uh, uh, concerning Mitt Romney uh, with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, could you explain how come he didn't answer the question when Newt Gingrich asked him concerning, concerning the, the, the involvement he had with them with inside trading? Thank you. I think he asked about gas prices. The first one was and then, and um, gas uh, gouging and why governors are not investigating that. Yeah, and because people are people are actually suffering the pain at the pump. Gasoline prices this past month uh, have been up again, over thirty cents a, a gallon. And, and went and up after Labor Day. That's a headline in one yeah. of the papers today. Went up after yeah. Labor Day when they usually go down. And and Labor Day it was the highest price ever for Labor Day. So and it's continuing uh, to to go up. Each state has a different uh, prices vary from com community to. Uh, community governors can sure look into that. They can look into what the taxes are uh, in their own states. Uh, and then in terms of insider trading, you know, uh, 
Congress passed a bill, Scott Brown from uh, uh, Massachusetts brought forth uh, called the Stock Act that uh, uh, prevents all of those sorts of things, makes all of it illegal, and, and uh, I think very uh, you know, sent the message that this is this is wrong. Was that bill signed into law? It was, yes. Okay, so that stands. That does we had stand. an earlier tweet about that as well, so I just wanted to clarify yes. that. Memphis, Tennessee, Dell, Democrats line. Uh, good morning, how y'all doing? Morning, Dell. Good. I have two questions for you, uh, the Senator. Um, my first question is, uh, in your eyes, has President Barack Obama done anything good or done anything that he said he was going to do? And my second question is, why can't we just put our titles aside as being Democrat, Republic, Independent, and work together to get this economy back up and running? Well, I think the President made some promises uh, that actually he kept, but I don't think they've helped the country. He, when he was running in 2008, he said under his administration, uh, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket because of his uh, approach to uh, fossil fuel based energy. And now we are seeing those uh, electricity rates skyrocketing and people are paying that. And I think that's hurting our, our economy. So he did keep his word uh, on, on some of those things. But, uh, but fundamentally, I think that under this president, I think that the country is worse than we were four years ago. I mean, that's always the fundamental question uh, in a presidential election. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? A and I think across the board, we are not better off now than we were four years ago. We have 23 million Americans who are either unemployed or underemployed. You have college graduates who are going back to live you know, with their parents because they can't find work that they've studied and, and trained for. Uh, we have uh, an incredible uh, debt uh, over $16 trillion in each of the past four years under this president. We've had a deficit where we've spent a uh, trillion dollars uh, more than we brought in, and that's borrowed money. A lot of it borrowed from China. We had an earlier call about China. We continue to borrow excessive amounts of money from China. We're borrowing about uh, $2 million every minute. I mean, every minute we as a country are borrowing $2 million just to keep, keep kind of our head above water. So I don't think that's the right a uh, solution for our country. I think that uh, what we've gotten with this president is more debt and more spending and a government that grows bigger every day. And I don't think that that's helpful. Culpepper of Virginia, Dominic, independent line. Okay, um, good morning, good morning. I'd just like to start out by saying that it, you guys are the hardest people to get in touch with. <laughs> but um, I've got a statement for Senator and I've got a question for him. My statement is, well, I'm going to start off with a question. The question is, he made a comment earlier that when he said the um, president or U.S. has been in the worst condition under Obama's presidency. Do you recall that? I was wondering what you were trying to compare his presidency to. Were you comparing it to Bush's presidency? Um, S state your question again, Dominic. Okay. Um, I recall his uh, comment that the senator made earlier um, in the show when he said that the U.S. has been under the worst conditions under this presidency, Obama's presidency. And I was just wondering what he was comparing it to, if he was comparing it to another presidency, say, for example, Bush's presidency, or okay. what, he, like, what was he trying to, what was he comparing it to? Sure. Well, you know, I'm talking about the fact that we have a $16 trillion debt, and it gets bigger every day. And we continue to spend money we don't have, and, and we have an incredible amount of unemployment in this country. The president promised, and he looked straight in the eye of the American people, and he said, if you pass my stimulus, uh, his so-called stimulus, I believe it's a failed stimulus, he said, unemployment rate will not go above 8%. And if you look at the charts that they put out, by now, unemployment rate ought to be under 6%. That's failed. Unemployment rate continued to rise, and it's been over 8% for the last 43 months. So what the president promised the American people and what he delivered are very different. Uh, somebody asked earlier about uh, health care and insurance. The president promised under his health care law, families would see insurance premiums drop by $2,500 per year. What we now know is that since this was passed, that's not happened. In fact, insurance premiums have gone up by more than that amount. Uh, president promised if you like what you have, you could keep it in terms of health insurance. That's not the case. Many, many Americans are losing the insurance that they liked, that they had, they could afford. And now under this law, that's not the case anymore. So you know, you can go item by item. I think that the president has, has failed, uh, and it is time for a new president. One last phone call here. Louisville, Kentucky, Bill, a Republican. You're on the air with the senator. 
Uh, yes, ma'am, I like to talk about uh, uh, Senator Bryce Owen. First of all, to you, you are saying that you... Hey, Bill, got to turn that television down. You're getting confused by the feedback. Yes, uh, yes I'd like to talk to Senator Bryce Owen. But first of all, I'd like to tell Senator Bryce Owen that this... Uh, payroll tax cut that this lady is talking about here is not a payroll tax cut. I'm a 66-year-old senior. That Social Security cut, that 2%, a person will retire five years down the road, that 2% cuts his pension. This is affecting the people from 55 up extremely harsh. Senator? Um, I think it's talking about the payroll uh, tax. I think it's not going to get extended and... Uh, uh, but there are so many things that need to be dealt with, and it looks like we're going to be they're going to be pushed off to the so-called lame duck session after the election, and which is going to be jammed up with a number of things, uh, too many to be handled thoughtfully. And that's why uh, you know I fault Harry Reid, the Democrat leader, for failing uh, to allow the Senate to use regular order and have hearings and. Uh, deal with the appropriations bills and pass a budget. What's your prediction then in that lame duck session? Do you think there there is a grand bargain or is there another short-term solution to avoid the so-called fiscal cliff? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think Greta, it's going to depend on who wins the elections. I mean, you know, is, are we looking at a, a, a president-elect Romney coming in? Are you looking at a second Obama term? Are you looking at a majority in the Senate being Republican or Democrat? And are looking at the House? And so I think being Republican or Democrat. I mean, I know um, my druthers is that it would be a President Romney and a Republican Senate and a Republican House. And that would change the dynamics of what happens uh, in a, in a uh, lame duck session, which is why I think so many things have been pushed off till then. All right, Senator Brasso, thanks for talking to right, our viewers thanks. and coming back to the Washington Journal. Appreciate thanks for having it. me.